Welcome to today's lecture. My name is Arslan Misadig and I work at the Department of Computer Science and Media Technology here in Linnaeus University, Kalmar campus. In this lecture, I am going to talk about mesh networking. So in this lecture, we will see uh, what are network topologies and routings, um, how mesh in IEEE 2.11 networks works, mesh in LoRa networks, and then at the end we will create our own mesh network using ESP32 devices and then we will also create a LoRa based mesh network using something called mesh testix. So I will show you how these mesh networks are created and how they work. Uh, when we talk about uh, networking we need to understand network topologies and how routings work. Uh, network topologies means that how devices are connected with each other. For example, we have bus topology where there is a bus, uh, there is one one cable you can say and all devices are connected with each other. Then we have ring topology that gives us more reliability so if one of the ring uh, one of the links is broken then devices will still be able to communicate with each other. Similarly, we have star topologies where all devices are connected with each other through one device and then we have extended star hierarchical uh, topology and we have mesh topology. So mesh is a local network topology and all devices are connected with each with each other in this form of mesh. So the benefit is is like if any of the links is broken for example this one then all devices will still be able to communicate with each other so uh, it gives us high reliability and also uh, uh, in mesh all uh, each node can operate as a host and as a router so we have more flexibility and self organizing organizing features uh, when we talk about any topology or let's say if we talk about mesh topology then uh, these mesh networks are handled through the definition of routing policies. And talking about routing, let's see what is routing and how basic routing protocols works that will help us to understand mesh protocols. So, uh, you know, when packet travels from different communication layers, uh, when it goes through network layers, uh, network layers, so one of the major purposes of network layer is forwarding. How it forwards? It forwards the packets through routing tables. And what are routing tables? They are set of instructions or rule, uh, often viewed in table format. And in this table, we have information about neighboring nodes, path cost, and so on. And when, when we create these routing tables, we can either create them statically or dynamically. Static routing tables are generally created by a network administrator and it takes a lot of time because the administrator needs to uh, do the entries of nodes manually. Uh, even if nodes leave, then the administrator need needs to remove these nodes. So it is suitable for a small network but if we increase the size of network we need something some automatic mechanism. The, uh, this automatically created tables are called dynamic routing tables and when we talk about dynamic routing tables we generally have two types of protocols one is called proactive and another is reactive protocol. Proactives are a table driven protocol where each node maintains a routing table and they are generally used for network. They are also used for network with a small number of nodes because each each node needs to uh, trans, uh, transfer their routing table information to other nodes. So you, you can consume more bandwidth. So, uh, okay, so uh, they are also called distance vector routing and one of the most famous examples of proactive table driven routing protocol is called distance vector routing protocol. We will go through this protocol uh, to see how it, how it works in the next slide. Okay, uh, proactive and then we have reactive routing table. Re reactive means on demand routing that means no node maintains a routing table. 
that uh, this kind of concept is based on flooding mechanism and it involves three main phases one is root discoveries then root maintenance and incremental search uh, reactive routing protocols most famous uh, most known example is ad hoc on demand distance vector routing protocol or AOD uh, I will show you how this one works and then we will go to go towards our mesh uh, mesh protocols distance vector routing let's see how it works uh, distance vector routing DVR is a intra domain routing protocol in which all routers uh, share information with each other and the purpose is to find the shortest path so uh, what they do is they create our routing tables and then they share this distance vector uh, to its neighboring neighboring nodes or neighboring routers and then they in this way they can find the uh, next hope or next router let's see how they how they create these tables so in this example I created uh, I I created this network of five nodes or routers I call them nodes or you can also call them router so there are five n1 n2 n3 n4 to n5 and they are connected with each other through a link and each link has this cost for example from n1 to n2 there is a cost of one and and so on okay so when they create these routing tables they use three three things one is in their routing table one is destination and then uh, distance how much distance it will take or or you can say cost and then what will be the next hope uh, I will I will show you how it works so let's see example of node 1 how node 1 will create the routing table so uh, from node 1 suppose we go to we still we are at node 1 again so from node 1 we can go to node 1 like this the cost will be 0 and next will be n1 uh, okay and so then from n1 we can go to n2 here cost will be 1 and next node will be n2 from n1 if we want to go to n3 we don't know the next uh, we don't know this this cost this cost so we can write here in its distance vector infinity and then next we also don't know so just leave it blank from n1 if we go to n4 still we don't know these these paths so we can write infinity here and for uh, from n1 to n5 also we can write infinity because we don't know this this link so only information n1 has uh, about uh, uh, in this network is this link okay similarly node 2 will create its routing table in a same in a same way so from n2 we can go to n1 the cost will be 1 you can see here and next will be n1 from n2 we can go to n3 it's and uh, so uh, from n2 we can go to n2 as I said previously so the cost is 0 and n2 we can go to n3 we know it shows that cost is 6 from n2 we can go to n5 we know this information because it's in neighbor so cost is 3 but we cannot go from n2 to n4 this this there is no direct path and we also don't know this information so we can write infinity here this is the first step when they initialize their routing tables in the next phase these uh, before that I will tell you n3 n4 and n5 they will also create their routing tables in a similar manner okay and then when they will update their routing table what they will do is for example node n2 will share its distance vector this information only this information note other other things in the routing table with its neighbors only note with all the nodes only with its neighbors so suppose this information reaches at n1 
Now N1 will update its routing table. Let's see how it updates. So th this is the new routing table, this one. Now look at this routing table. So from N1 we can go, we can stay at N1, so cost will be zero. From N1 we can go to N2 and cost will be one. And now from N1 we can go to N3 because we have this information. From this information, node 2 uh, has this information in the form of distance vector and N1 knows that the cost to go to N3 is 6. So first it will go to N2, 1 plus 6 is 7. So from N1 with the help of distance vector from N2 we know how to go to N3 and how much cost it will uh, how much it will take from N1 can we go to N4 no because in distance vector there is no information about N4 so it is still infinite and then similarly from N1 we can go to N5 because now we have distance vector from N2 which says that to go from N2 to N5 the cost is 3. So 3 plus 1 is 4 we can say here. This is how these nodes will continue updating their routing tables and they will share this distance vector with their neighboring nodes and in this way they can create these routing tables automatically with the help without uh, uh, any help from network administrator this is the very basics of distance vector routing and this is also the basics of all other routing protocols now let's see the example of reactive routing protocols which is uh, ad hoc on demand distance vector routing protocols uh, in this protocol no node maintain a routing table what they uh, do is they use this mechanism called flooding many protocols are based on this flooding mechanism and, and let's see how it works suppose we want to go from node A to node H so what node A will do is node A will broadcast a small packet that is a small uh, uh, information which is called RREQ uh, and in this packet uh, RREQ mean root request and in this infor in this packet they will have this information of source ID node that is A destination where it wants to go which is H and then uh, how many hopes this uh, this RREQ has traveled and so on. So when it will broadcast this this message it will go to node B and node C its neighbors only. When it will reach at B, B will rebroadcast this message it will go to E and it will also go to uh, A but when A will see that this message has its own source ID node a will discard this message and then when it will reach to E it will rebroadcast it to its neighbor that is F and G similarly when this packet was at C it broadcasted it and it went to E and D and similarly from other other nodes for example F and G it will be rebroadcasted until it reaches its, its destination when this node H will see that destination node ID is its ID it will reply a root reply message that so H will count the number of hope this message has traveled and then it will uh, it uh, okay so at this stage the H has received this message from three different nodes that is F G and I so it will calculate that this message contains uh, how many number of hopes in each each route for example it will have three routes the message traveled from A to B A to B here and then B to E and E to F F to H 1 2 3 and 4 number of hopes are 4 
Similarly, when this packet traveled from A to C, C to E, E to G and H, the number of hops were 4 also. But when it traveled from A to C, A to C, C to E, and then E to G, G to I and H, the number of hops are 5. So H will select small number of hops route and in this case we have two so it can select any of them suppose it selected root one that is how using flooding mechanism A knows next time which route it should take and H node that which route it should use to send back the acknowledgement the, uh, this is also the basic example of how ad hoc on demand distance vector routing protocol works and using these protocols we can create more advanced level protocols such as protocols for mesh networks. Mesh in IEEE 802.11 networks. Uh, IEEE 802 uh, has two standards. One is called 802.3 standard which is used for Ethernet and then we have 802.11 which is a series of protocols for the basics of Wi-Fi networks. So we can, if we see the infrastructure of uh, 802.11 networks in this diagram, you can see that we have access points and stations are, stations means that your laptop or your mobile phone using Wi-Fi network, it is connected to the access point and access point is connected to wired infrastructure through a cable. So to uh, connect these routers with each other, IEEE made amendments uh, in their IEEE 802.11 protocol and made a new protocol called 802.11s which is a standard for mesh networking in uh, in this scenario. So if you look at this second diagram you can see that these access point now we can call them mesh access points they are connected with each other wirelessly and stations are still, uh, these nodes are still connected with these access points. So in this way we have extended range and uh, we can, you know, extend this range and we can have number of applications. So this is a standardized protocol and nowadays also we have these uh, commercial routers that is that are based on 802.11s uh, mechanisms. For example, I can show you uh, this, these mesh access points, these, these ones, so they, they works in a similar way as I showed you in this diagram. And I also forgot, uh, forgot to mention that the physical layer of this mesh base uh, um, network is same as the previous 802.11 basic networks but they introduce new routing procedure perform at MAC layer rather than network layer and uh, the basic topology formation is as follows they start to create this mesh network with the transmission of beacons so first phase of topology formation is discovery similar to other routing protocols uh, you remember the root request message in AODB, it, it's it's same like this. So discovery could be passive or active. Passive means that the client radio listens on each node for beacon sent periodically by an access point. And active means that the client radio transmit this request and then listen for a probe response from an access point. And in both these messages, it contains a mesh ID. In AODB, AODB previously in previous slide we saw that this mesh ID was the node ID. So in this case it is called mesh ID. And then, okay, so this default routing protocol for 802.11s is called the Hybrid Wireless Mesh Protocol or HWMP. It offers both proactive and reactive path selection and is based on AODB protocol. So during the discovery phase, similar to AODB, the network is flooded with root request message. But in this case, it is called root announcement, R-A-N-N. -N. 
when we talk about 802.11 based mesh network we have seen number of different applications for example we can use it for indoor positioning uh, indoor positioning like this we can create a mesh network and can have a uh, you know this indoor positioning system as you can see in this diagram similarly we can have video surveillance scenarios where the uh, uh, cameras are connected with each other and they create this large network of video surveillance so we have commercially available such kind of systems as, as you can see they are based on mesh Wi-Fi network security systems so you can have this video surveillance and so on and then uh, we can also use it for wide area surveillance to preserve forest from fire controlling street lights uh, street lights for example this one where street lights can be connected with each other in the form of mesh and then they can create this large network similarly we can have intelligent transportations uh, these examples are based on these papers research papers if you want to know more about them you can read these papers now let's talk about LoRa mesh networking when we talk about LoRa uh, network we know that it has a long range communication tens of kilometers so what uh, how LoRa networks are formed each nodes using LoRa communication mechanism they are connected with a gateway uh, directly without any intermediate nodes so, but the range is still very uh, it's a long range and then gateways are connected to network servers either through Wi-Fi cellular or Ethernet network when we create a uh, this mesh network that means these nodes these LoRa nodes they are connected with each with each other and they create this topology called a single hop stars of stars topology so this is how LoRa when mesh topology looks like where devices are connected with each other and then one of the devices is connected with a gateway in this way we can have a very long range when we I when I say very long range that means city-wide area networks or even even larger than that so LoRa mesh protocol is not standardized yet as compared to 802.11 base uh, mesh protocol as we saw in previous slides in LoRa mesh there are number of proposals for example there is a protocol called LoRa blink uh, you can read more about it in this uh, reference so LoRa blink created a mesh protocol of six node using LoRa communication and what it did is it integrates MAC and routing at the same layer in a synchronous flooding based uh, protocol and they mentioned in their paper that the PDR is around 80 percent and then another example is hybrid wireless mesh protocol combined with AODV this this can also be used for LoRa uh, mesh networking and then we also have an example of parent child topology based mesh and then there is LoRa based network with intermediate relay nodes so they just forward these packets that means there are proposals there are papers on on LoRa mesh networking but still it is not standardized so yeah uh, we let's see in the future maybe they will standardize something about LoRa so since LoRa gives us very long range if we talk about LoRa mesh networking so we can have large number of applications as well so with, with this we can have large scale environmental sensi sensing we have example of large scale orchard moni uh, monitorization we can you do wild area animal tracking and then also there is a paper smart metering in rural locations or off-grid emergency communication so off-grid emergency communication means that you don't need internet you can do you know communication between look these LoRa devices I will show you how we can do this actually so now let's create our own ESP based mesh network 
So ESP32 Mesh basic example. This example is based on the following tutorial uh, in this website. Uh, I can show you. We will go to this website and they have this ESP based mesh tutorial. You can use ESP32 or ESP8266. I have ESP32 with me here you can see. Uh, this device and I have four of them so we will create a mesh network of these devices to start uh, I will go to uh, I will open my Ard Arduino and then uh, we need to set our board ESP32 board in Arduino so we can go to f uh, I can show you from here file preferences and then here as you can see in there yeah, you can see uh, from this tutorial first step is we need to install ESP32 board in Arduino IDE uh, let's click on that there is a video tutorial for this if you want to see how they are doing but I will show you how it works so first go to file preferences and then copy this thing and paste it here I already have and click OK after that uh, we go to tool board and board manager I'll show you board manager and here we can see and here you can search ESP32 uh, by express if system so I already have this uh, I already have this installed in my Arduino okay and next instruction is you need to uh, test this installation Okay, go to tool board and so if I go to my Arduino I can see the, this these things appear in the Arduino that means it is installed and you also need to check that if you are connected to the correct port so now I will I will connect my RDE uh, this ESP32 to to my computer and after that you will run some basic example we will not run this example we will run directly the uh, mesh example we can go there directly instead of running this one so in mesh network either we can have a this kind of mesh architecture or a architecture where all devices are broadcasting the messages to each other so we have done this step install painless mesh library and now we can run the uh, broadcast message example this is how it will it will work each node will send a high message to other node and those nodes will broadcast these messages and they are all communicating with each other this is their uh, library code that we will need to use in our our Arduino but we, we can uh, quickly see what this code does so first you will include a mesh library and then you can have uh, they mention the mesh prefix that is the name of your mesh you can change it whatever you like and then password you can give password to your mesh and uh, this mesh port refers to the TCU port that you want the mesh uh, server to run on and then they have a scheduler it is mentioned in their guide that uh, avoid using delay function in the mesh network because some tasks are running if you use this delay then it can uh, it can stop this task from happening and can cause the mesh to lose stability so they use instead this task scheduler to run your task which is used for uh, used in this library and then um, uh, okay so this is how they 
use this task send message for calling the send message function every every second as long as the program is running and then send a message to mesh and this is the message message they are sending we will modify this for four nodes along with this message we will send node, uh, node ID and then we will broadcast this this message with this interval and then they have these uh, callback functions that they, when they will uh, when the node will receive the message and if there is a new uh, node then this function will be used to to uh, create a new connection and if the uh, if there is something something is changed in the network then this function will be used to uh, notify that there is a change and also they have this <coughs> uh, node time adjust callback function it runs when the network adjusts the time so that all nodes are synchronized and okay and and then we will uh, initialize the serial monitor and we can also choose to uh, choose the desired debug message types and also and then we will initialize the mesh with details that we discussed previously here and then assign assign all the callback functions to their corresponding events and then finally add the tasks and message function to the user scheduler or and then at the end you can keep running this mesh with the loop here so uh, let's go to this code copy it in our Arduino and then we can modify it little bit and then we can verify if everything is okay then we can it, it looks everything is okay we can upload this code to our ESP device okay and then we can open a serial monitor here you can see that a TCP server established on port this this port now this is only one device so we don't see messages here I will add more devices now now I connected second device to my system I can name it two. then we can again upload this code to to this device I uploaded the code on all the devices. I paused the video to save our time. Now device number 4 is connected to my serial uh, monitor and all other devices I place them uh, nearby my office. So let's see if we are receiving messages from these devices. I will open the serial monitor and yes uh, you can see we have message from node 3 and this this is its node ID and <coughs> these uh, devices are transmitting to each other but we are only seeing the message received by node 4 because that is only one connected to my serial uh, screen uh, monitor so this is how the ESP32 uh, mesh is created using this painless mesh library 
if you want to make it more advanced uh, you can connect some sensors with your ESP device and then you can start uh, receiving or transmitting the sensor readings and then you can also extend it you can have more devices or maybe you can create a smart street light system or so on with, with this kind of mesh network and you can extend its range based on as many as devices you add basically you can have a number of applications the steps that we went through are also mentioned on these slides uh, one thing I forgot to mention that when we were installing this painless mesh library there are number of dependencies that you need to install I mentioned them here they are also mentioned in their website so install those dependencies this one you need only if you are using ESP8266 device and here is the link of code uh, that they have in their website and that is how it is created so moving on now we will see the example of LoRa mesh with something called mesh testing so <coughs> LoRa mesh with mesh testing what is it we can go to their website and we can see this is mesh testing it's an open source off grid decentralized mesh network built to run an affordable low power devices uh, yes you can okay I can click here get started and this supports two types of microcontroller which is ESP32 and NRF52 uh, chip I have now Heltec device which is variant 2.1 actually I will try Heltec health device to run this to create this LoRa uh, mesh network based on their tutorial and we have more <coughs> information uh, in this website I also added those informations here in the in my slide so you can see uh, you can directly go by clicking in this website this is the device you can see in in this slide uh, this is what I have at the moment this is uh, Heltec wireless stick variant 2.1 so first step is uh, first we identify our hardware and then we download the latest firmware file for our hardware which is uh, in my case Heltec wireless stick so I will go to this link now uh, here and before flashing the firmware there is also information about install serial driver so I already have this I will not go into this step uh, but here le let's do this step we can click here and then it says that there are three ways to do this flashing one is web based installer which is they mentioned that it is highly recommended for firmware flashes another one is through CLI script and then you can also use using external serial adapter let's let's stick to this one uh, web flasher and then uh, we will do this step I will now connect my device to my computer I, I okay my device is connected now I will go to this website and here uh, we will select what variant we have I have this one you can see this variant uh, on the back side of this device you can you can see this variant uh, and then select the firmware we can select this latest variant and then whether you want to update the device wipe or reinstall a any of any of the options you select and then you click suppose maybe if I update this because I previously installed the firmware so I will connect it and then see install I don't want to raise at the moment and it will uh, prepare installation complete and here you have logs if it is doing something um, okay and then uh, after flashing 
we will go to next step that is connect and configure device so now we will click on this one and here you have uh, three different options you can do serial bluetooth or network and they also have a uh, uh, android and ios application so i also installed ios application on my phone so i will show you uh, how they are communicating and in this case now since i am connected with my computer so i will click on web client and we can we can add this device uh, here so web client new connection and then it is connected uh, through serial this is our device yeah so this is how the uh, how the web client looks like here I can send messages but now at the moment there is no other device uh, in this area I will I will create this is this is one device you can see in the screen and now I will create an other similar device and then they will start communicating with each other the other device I will connect it to my mobile phone so I, I will show you the screenshot of that one also I connected one health tech device I named it mesh node uh, one uh, to this web client my computer and another device um, I call it mesh node 2 is connected with my mobile phone so uh, the communication between this computer and health tech device which is mesh node 1 is through serial uh, communication and from the other node mesh node 2 and my mobile phone are connected through bluetooth so to connect your device to your uh, mobile phone you can uh, install their app this is the screen uh, video recording of my android phone and here this is the mesh test take app when you will install this you go to the setting and search uh, for a device and start pairing that means uh, your bluetooth your mobile phone and this device is pairing and then it is it says that connected to the radio and then you can see number of people that are using these devices in the list and you can send one of them a direct high message or whatever message so here in this screen you can see I sent a high message from my phone using this device and then from client I send a reply message and which is received on my phone using this this device without any without the need of any internet connectivity